Now we're going to talk about screening tests. And this really falls within the realm of prevention. So let's start first with a timeline of a person's life. And here we have uh, the patient's life before they have any disease, and this is when the biological onset of disease is. But they are asymptomatic up until some point, and then that's when the symptoms develop. And then at some point, they decide to you know, put off going to the doctor. They finally go to the doctor. They get a test done, and their diagnosis and treatment starts until ultimately they die from this disease. So let's maybe use an example to illustrate this. So let's say we got a guy who smokes. But at this point, even though he smokes, he doesn't have any lung cancer yet. But then here, what happens uh, is he develops lung cancer. So in this portion here, he's disease-free, and now we have the disease onset. He developed the cancer, but he's asymptomatic, so he doesn't even know he has the cancer yet. And then at some point, he starts coughing up some blood. So now his symptoms have started, but he hasn't sought care yet. And so finally he makes an appointment, and he sees a doctor who then asks him to get a test, and he gets a, a CT scan and eventually a lung biopsy, and then it gets, he gets diagnosed with cancer over here. And at this point, he also starts his treatment. And treatment goes on until either he dies or he gets cured, whatever the outcome is. So this is the natural history of disease. And we could call this phase right here the preclinical phase because we haven't actually started doing anything. And then from symptom onset till the eventual outcome, we call that the clinical phase because now the disease is clinically apparent. Now, our goal here is that we want to try to prevent disease, and we can prevent it in three different spots. Now, primary prevention aims to prevent disease from happening in the first place. So, in this case, we tell this guy, stop smoking, eat some more fruits and vegetables, and go out and exercise. Now, uh, once disease has already started, then the, we would use secondary prevention. And this is screening. And this is what we want. What we want to do is try to move the time from diagnosis from here to over here with the hope that with more time we would have more effective treatment so that we could actually improve the outcome. So screening really means we want to move the, give us more time in order to do something. And finally, tertiary prevention treats the various uh, effects of the disease once it's been diagnosed with the hope that we can perhaps affect a cure or at least improve this outcome in some way. So ultimately primary prevention is best. Eat your fruits and veggies, don't smoke, go get some exercise. And secondary prevention is what we're going to talk about here and that is screening. So when a disease first starts it might not be detectable but at some point in here there's probably a, a place where a test can detect it. So here on this timeline, this is the point at which a test can, can detect it. So the goal is if we detect it here, we move diagnosis and treatment from here to over here. So now we have all this extra time in which to treat uh, the patient and hopefully improve this outcome. So this time that we saved here, that we, we were able to diagnose it earlier, we call this the lead time. So then who should we screen? Who would benefit from this? Well, it should be a disease process that ends in something bad that we want to fix. Like, if we were to screen someone and they would survive anyway, then what's the point in doing it? And we should be able to do something about it with this lead time. We should be able to change this outcome. So let's talk about screening tests. And we'll talk about airport screening uh, as an example. And so what airport screening does is it takes a population, in this case it's all the flyers, and what we want to screen for here is uh, the presence of any weapons. And the bad outcome that we're trying to prevent is a bad guy getting on the plane. And so we have one guy here who actually has a gun, this guy has a metal belt buckle, and this guy has a body piercing. And so as these guys go through the metal detector, um, a bunch of people are going to get picked up by this. It's going to ring for this guy, it's going to ring for this guy, and it's going to ring for this guy. So these guys, they didn't set up the metal detector so they can go on their way. 
Now these guys all did set off the metal detector, and so these are our positive tests, these are our negative tests. And this is the only true positive, and these are all false neg false positives. This guy was set off by his body piercing, this one by his belt buckle, this one by the, the gun he had, and this guy, who knows what happened, He just it just got set off for him. All these guys are our negative tests, and we want to make sure that these are all true negatives because we're sending these guys on our way, and we don't want to send someone with a gun on the plane. Now, these guys here are positives. They need further testing. So they all get a pat-down. Now, a pat-down's a fairly invasive test. They're getting into your personal space. They're putting their hand in places that uh, you don't want most people putting their hands. But uh, we don't want to do this pat-down on everybody because that would have been so time-intensive, and it's really not fair to everybody to get... Uh, to, to have their personal space invaded like that. But these guys, this group, has a higher likelihood of having something bad, so we want to do the more invasive test on these guys. So we do our pat-down on them, and we find that this guy, this guy, and this guy can go on his way. And this guy, of course, he's going to jail. So what a screening test does is it identifies uh, people who are more likely to have a condition. It separates a population into those for, uh, for whom in more checks are going to be needed and those who don't need any more checking. And the reason we want to do this is because that subsequent test uh, could be very invasive, could be uh, expensive, it could be time consuming, and so we can't afford to do that on everybody, but we want to know which people should we do it on. Well, we screen people and that tells us who we do it on. So one common screening test we do is a prostate-specific antigen looking for prostate cancer. And we know that if the test is negative, they probably don't have the disease. But if it's positive, it could be due to many causes. It could be prostate cancer, or it could be BPH, which is just a big prostate, or prostatitis, an inflamed prostate. So they're going to need some other test to distinguish between all of these. And so maybe they get a prostate biopsy. And this is an invasive test, which we would like to avoid on uh, the whole population, but we'll only do it in the people that were potentially going to have something bad. Okay, so now let's look at the characteristics of a test that we would want to use for a screening test. So here's our two-by-two two table again. Here's disease at the top. This patient has a disease. This person doesn't. And here's the results of the screening test. It's a positive screening test or a negative screening test. And if we think of our example from the previous uh, from the previous example, our screening test could be the medical meta, metal detector and our uh, disease here would be the presence of a gun or a, a bad guy that we don't want to get on the plane. So the, the thing that we want to avoid with this screening test is sending a bad guy with a gun on the plane. So we want this to be as low as possible. So in this case we want zero false negatives. And you'll remember that in our positive tests, we had caught a couple people who didn't have a gun, right? They had a body piercing or a belt buckle or, so, or some guy who just had nothing on him that we could explain why. So we really don't care about, in this case, about this. Of course, we would like to limit this number to make this as small as possible. We want to have as few false positives as possible, but it doesn't, it's not as important as having as few false negatives. Because we know all these patients with a positive test are going to need another test. And we would like to limit the unnecessary testing on these people, but we definitely want to catch these. Now let's look real quick at two uh, kinds of bias we can get in screening tests. So here we have the timelines of two patients uh, who uh, have the same uh, outcomes here. And so this is the onset of disease. We don't know they're asymptomatic and all of a sudden he develops symptoms, then he seeks care, he start, gets his diagnosis and treatment, and finally he dies. And the same thing happens with this person. So we would call this length of time between diagnosis and their ultimate demise their length of survival. Let's actually put some, some times on here. So onset of symptoms was in the year two, or onset of the disease was in the year 2000. They started developing symptoms in the year 2004 got treatment in 2006, and eventually died in 2010. So the survival here was about four years. 
Now let's say we got this patient down here who has the exact same characteristics. A disease started in 2000. He became symptomatic in 04. If he would have sought treatment, it would have been in 06, and he, and he dies in 2010. But because of screening, we caught the disease early. We caught it in 2002. And because we caught it early, we diagnosed it early, we were able to start treating it early, and we were now can say that his survival time went from 2002 to 2010. So that is eight years. And now you would be tempted to say that this screening was a success. Look, it increased survival from four years to eight years. But in reality, that's not what happened. All we did was d uh, discover the disease earlier, but they died at the same time, right? If we, if we had counted survival from the onset, from the onset of disease, this person had 10 years to live. And without screening from the onset of disease, this person had 10 years to live. So there really was no difference. This is called lead time bias. Because screening just gave us this lead time here, and it just we knew that it, about the disease uh, for a little bit more time, but we really didn't increase their survival. Okay, again, let's say we have two patients here as their timelines of their disease process. And this guy on the top, he got uh, screening done, and he was able to initiate treatment, and then so he lived uh, this long. Now, this poor, unfortunate guy on the bottom had a very, very aggressive form of this disease. He, in fact, did not live until symptoms developed or to get diagnosis treat or treatment. He died very quickly. And so he didn't long, live long enough to even get screened. And so if you were looking at these from the outside, you would say, huh, the guys who got screened, they live much longer than the people who don't get screened. So the screening test is great. But that's not really what happened here, right? This person just had such a horribly aggressive disease that he couldn't even get screened. He did not live long enough to get screened. And so we call this length bias. So there you have it. There are some basics about screening. And remember, with screening, we want to try to catch something early so that we can do something about it and we could prevent a bad outcome. And we want to try to minimize any uh, invasive testing that we uh, need to do. We don't want to do it on everybody, but we want to do it only on a select group of people. And who is that select group of people? Those are the people that we screen for. Those are the people that we are going to catch with the screening test. All right. I will talk to you later.